Welcome, everyone, to this week's edition of Inside Harvard Football. It is the game edition of Inside Harvard Football, truth be told, as the Crimson get ready for their final game. It will be the game at the Yale Bowl in New Haven, Connecticut on Saturday. And our time with Tim this week, Coach, uh, we want to welcome you in. And uh, obviously, after battling, and we, we do mean battling back into the Ivy race, storming back with those emotional victories against uh, Dartmouth and uh, Columbia. Uh, the Crimson uh, now out of Ivy League contention. Very uh, rare occasion uh, to be coming to the final game out of the uh, out of contention for the Ivy League crown. A lot still on the line. And uh, that was uh, based on the result against Penn on Saturday. I know uh, disappointment all around with the, with the final result of that one. No question, Bernie. We were behind the eight ball from the get-go. Um, a very rare sort of... Bad fit on the first run, 70-plus uh, yards for a touchdown, certainly a, a momentum uh, breaker for us. And uh, beyond that, I thought our defense played pretty well for much of the game, uh, coming up with three takeaways. Uh, but they ran the ball really well, really effectively, almost 300 yards, and we did not. And, you know, that was really the biggest difference in the game. And I think the second one was, you know, we just didn't capitalize when we were in the red zone. We had three opportunities in the red zone and came away with no touchdowns, which, uh, I, if I'm not mistaken, is the first time and I think is the longest streak in, in Ivy League history of scoring touchdowns that uh, was suspended with that game. So, yeah, very frustrating, tough loss for us. That's right. Going back, uh, what uh, nearly nearly twenty years were just a re- remarkable uh, stretch there. Uh, offensively, it uh, it has been a situation where you've uh, gone to the bullpen on a couple of occasions from uh, from one uh, from one time one one time to uh, another as far as uh, uh, going back between Joe and Jake and Jake and Joe this year. And I guess uh, the big question now is you get ready for uh, Saturday. Uh, it has been pretty much, I guess, an open competition since going back to the spring. I suspect it probably remains that here right to the final week, Coach. Yeah, Bernie, it's a fluid situation. And, uh, you know, I certainly don't feel comfortable saying that, but that's the reality. Yeah. I don't think it's necessarily a reflection on the quarterbacks. It's more on us as a unit, uh, coaches and players. You know, we have, uh, for whatever reason, we have really, really struggled to score points in the league this year. Uh, other than the Brown game. And uh, it probably goes back to 1996, my second year here, when we've really been this challenged offensively. And often mm. we hope to uh, to break that against Yale this week, but that certainly has uh, not been a strength for us this, this season thus far. Big part of Penn's success was uh, really t- taking Charlie Booker away. Charlie uh, uh, had his struggles uh, finding any kind of uh, uh, holes or uh, seams in the, in the Penn defense uh, Stout run defense uh, for Penn, and uh, really seemed to have uh, a pretty good effect. You know, once again, you were behind right from the first play of the game, but uh, seemed to seemed to have uh, a pretty good success uh, dropping seven and, and and rushing four to uh, to really tighten things up. Yeah, well, the bottom line, Bernie, is that uh, you know the two things you have to do of many things you have to do. You've got to be able to run the football to be successful consistently in college football. And you've got to be able to defend the run. And uh, they rushed for almost 300 yards. And obviously, we struggled running the ball. And that's that's obviously not a good combination for the Crimson. Solomon uh, hit you hard with the uh, the 77 yard uh, touchdown run on uh, the first play. Uh, He also uh, busted one later on for 43. And that was all uh, set up on what really was the uh, the swing of the game. Impressive drive to start the second half. And uh, you got uh, down inside the 10 penalty and uh, then the, the, the pick, which uh, turned out to be a 14-point swing. Well, no question. Um, you know, three trips to the red zone against a team like Penn, you know it's going to be a close game. You've got to come away with at least two touchdowns and preferably three. And uh, to come away with only uh, six points is probably the biggest statistic in the game. Yeah, bright spots that uh, you did. I know that they were probably fewer and further between, but uh, as you looked at it and broke it down and looked at the film and now get ready for this week, uh, anything that you did take away that uh, you looked to build on coming into the, to the big one this week? Well, I think one is, um, you know, we continue to play really hard defensively, and they wore yeah. us down a bit, but we played good red zone defense. We forced three takeaways that really kept us in the game. 
so defensively, we continue to play well. We're not the overpowering Harvard defense we have been in the past because of, for a lot of different variables, certainly one of them being attrition in a lot of positions. Um, but yeah, if you can play defense, Bernie, you're going to be in every game. And playing a defense uh, this week uh, certainly uh, will be uh, a, the, the mission for uh, for your Crimson. And a lot of weapons, to say the least. Uh, this has been a uh, Yale offense that has been uh, prolific over the course of the year. Uh, six of their wins have been pretty uh, lopsided, Coach. And uh, sometimes teams that are in that position, you don't know uh, what they're going to do in tight situations. Well, I guess come from behind and tight with a lot on the line. Uh, Yale really did rise to the occasion against, as you know, a very good Princeton team. Well, a tremendously impressive victory. Uh, part of it is obviously, as you mentioned, Bernie, they're down 24-7 in the second quarter. I think the other part of that game was, um, you know, they dominated the ball. They held the ball for 41 minutes, which against a team like Princeton is really impressive. And just beyond that, they're a team that, um, you know, the things you have to do as a starting point to be a championship caliber program, you have to be able to defend the run. They're number one in the league, and you have to be able to run the football. They're number one in the league. So you can check off those boxes. They're a very, very good football team. To look at the weapons that they have, it'll be a second look at uh, at Kurt Rawlings, uh, who is uh, now a sophomore, and uh, the addition in the backfield uh, Zane Dudek, as you look at him and you think of some of the runners you faced this year and some of the uh, the young running backs you've had to deal with during your tenure at Harvard, uh, how do you rate Dudek and, and uh, what does what does he bring in particular that uh, seems to uh, make, make him as successful as he's been so quickly? Well, I think the, the biggest thing for the run offense of Yale is their offensive line and their ability to throw the football. Uh, it, it's, it's tough to really gang up on them. Um, they have been the dominant offensive line in the league this year. And, and those things bode well for any running back. But Zane Dudek is a kid that has uh, outstanding vision, great finishing speed, um, excellent balance, and a very underrated lower body strength. And the combination has been, um, you know, he, he's, I think, a slam dunk to be rookie of the year in the Ivy League. And Rawlings, a, a guy that, uh, you know, you've obviously you've, you've seen some uh, quality. over Once again, your tenure at Harvard, you've seen some quality guys that you've uh, had to deal with and, Many of them you've dealt with successfully over your tenure. Do you uh, put Rawlings in uh, in that class uh, toward uh, even only a, just a sophomore uh, toward that elite staff, elite status in terms of uh, what you're going to need to uh, defense him? Well, I think it's too early to to give uh, him the elite tag, Bernie. But uh, certainly a kid that um, gets him in the right play, uh, that gives him great balance, and has matured tremendously since his freshman year. So he's a very, very good football player. Uh, whether or not he's a lead quarterback remains to be seen. Hmm. But he certainly, I think most importantly, which you can give him, he's a, a championship caliber quarterback. Indeed, with uh, Yale already getting a piece of the rock there in, in the Ivy race. Defensively, uh, as uh, you evaluate this Yale team, uh, it seems like uh, they've had contributions. And uh, depth-wise, it seems like there's been different guys that have been stepping up for them each week. And just to give us uh, some of the guys that are particularly, uh, if there's a couple of guys maybe at each level that have uh, really jumped out at you that you're going to have to account for this week. Well, they're a tremendously deep football team. They play 12 different guys in their defensive line, which is an, certainly a luxury. Um, but you look at, uh, you know, Kopachi Tyler as one example, a 300-pound uh, defensive mm. tackle, tremendous football player. Their linebackers, a great group led by Matt Opplinger. Um you know, they're just really good at every level and, and, and a very big team. Their linebackers, I think, average 6'4", 235 pounds. Their defensive line inside guys are both around 295, and their corners and their defensive backs average over 200 pounds. So it's a big, brawling group, and they've changed their defense. They completely changed from hmm. uh, the package they had had for five years and went to the Columbia package of – blitz and almost exclusively man-to-man coverage and it has changed them overnight and uh, ironically they end up being the one and two teams in the league defensively this year with pl- playing uh, similar systems any any help there the fact that you uh, looked at a columbia team with a similar system just the quirk of the schedule you get columbia just a couple of weeks before yale and a little bit of familiarity i think there definitely is familiarity on our part um i think that probably plays out to their advantage as well when you consider that they've seen a lot of the ways we're going to attack man coverage they certainly will have an opportunity to see that but um, at the end of the day whether it's man zone or in between um, you got to beat them 
and, and protect with uh, with a team that that three point six uh, sacks a game is a pretty gaudy number for any defense. Yeah, Bernie, they've got a bunch of guys who have sacks, um, and, and having big linebackers that are coming on the rush is certainly an advantage when you put them against the backs one on one. Um, and when you know you've got good man coverage, which probably other than Princeton game, they played great man coverage. Um, it, it's 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 a tough combination if you've got that going. And uh, also, it would be remiss if we didn't mention on the uh, the special team side uh, the fact that they've got a guy that can uh, can break uh, break things open with uh, Jason Alessi in the return game. Yeah, Jason's an outstanding defensive back, an outstanding guy on special teams, and. Again, this is a team that, uh, at least on paper, Bernie, would appear to have very few weaknesses. Big challenge uh, for the Crimson, although uh, you can't get a piece of that Ivy title, uh, Coach. Uh, I still suspect it's a pretty easy week for you in the motivational uh, category of your job in terms of that responsibility. (laughs) Well, I always say whether you're going into the Ivy League, into this game, into the Yale game, you know, with a chance at the the Ivy League title, which, if I'm not mistaken, we have had at least a mathematical chance every single year this century, or yes. not, when we're five and four going into the game. At the end of the day, it's still all about pride, pride in our program, pride in our school, pride in our alumni, and uh, the bottom line is that's what it's all about. So, and for anybody who's who's not motivated, uh, there's no excuse. There's no excuse not to be motivated, to be excited, and to have this opportunity to finish our season is a great thing for us. And Coach, I really appreciate your time and being able to initiate inside Harvard football and having our time with Tim every week. Just uh, be remiss if uh, didn't give you an opportunity to uh, just to, to talk a little bit about your class of 2018 and uh, having their final opportunity uh, to go at Yale at the Yale Bowl. Just uh, your, your thoughts about them and a year that, you know, every year is different. And this one, you certainly have had your share of adversity to deal with uh, right really from the opening, literally right from the opening game. Well, they've been a great group of kids, and that's all that counts. You know, and I, I do feel very badly that, um, you know, we've let them down a little bit to, to not give them a shot at a championship as so many of our our senior-laden teams have had been. But um, at the end of the day, I just I, I just think they've been great kids to coach. They've been great role models for the underclassmen. Um, they've been fun kids to work with. They've given us everything we can. And from my standpoint as the head coach, there's nothing more you can ask of those guys. Coach, uh, we'll, we'll ask uh, for a, a W on uh, Saturday and a strong finish. And uh, once again, I uh, want to thank you for uh, just my involvement and, and uh, being with you again, having the opportunity to run with you again. And uh, look forward to, look forward to being back with time with Tim uh, next season with Inside Harvard Football. Thanks, thanks so much. My pleasure, Bernie. Thank you for all you do for Harvard Football. That is our time with Tim on the week of the game as the Crimson get ready for Yale at the Yale Bowl on Saturday. And we'll be back. Time now for Crimson in the NFL on Inside Harvard Football. We begin with the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Ryan Fitzpatrick made his first start of 2017 versus former team, the New York Jets, on Sunday at MetLife Stadium. Ryan completed 17 of 34 passes for 187 yards and sealed the Bucs' 15-10 victory with a fourth-quarter touchdown toss to Charlie Sims. Cam Brait was targeted three times by Fitzpatrick and recorded one reception for 10 yards. Kyle Juszczyk returned from a neck injury to lead the 49ers with five receptions for 27 yards in San Francisco's first win of the season, 31-21, over the New York Giants. Juszczyk also carried once and has established himself as the premier targeted fullback in the NFL with 20. Elsewhere, the Chicago Bears signed Ben Broniker from their practice squad, the Chargers signed Cole Toner, and Nick Easton returned from injury to the Vikings lineup. And that's this week's Crimson in the NFL here on Inside Harvard Football. Many thanks to Mike, Hannah, and Kelsey for their contributions this season. Welcome back, everyone, to this week's edition of Inside Harvard Football. Bernie Corbett pleased to be joined this week in our Crimson Player Profile by redshirt senior defensive back Rashawn McGee. And uh, Rashawn getting ready for his final game in the game in New Haven at the Yale Bowl on Saturday 
And uh, Rashawn, great to have you uh, spend some time with us this week. Welcome. Hey, I appreciate you having me on, Bernie. Well, Rashawn, it's uh, a long and winding road to where you sit now and uh, getting ready for your final game against Yale. And uh, you came into uh, the program and mentioned uh, you exercising the opportunity to uh, to play uh, here your senior year and fifth year eligible. Uh, you look back now, and I'm, I'm sure that there's a, a thousand things going through your head about the whole experience and, and, and what, what that's uh, meant to you. Oh, yeah, definitely. I mean, I mean, coming in as a freshman, I actually played behind a couple of redshirt seniors, and, and seeing those guys perform and, and the things I learned from them was – uh, stuff I can't even explain and how much it, it's helped my game. And then to be in that position now as, as one of the leaders on the team and one of the redshirt seniors um, in the defensive back uh, core, it's, it's it's really an honor. And to be able to take some of these young guys under my wing and kind of express to them how much this game means to the program and, and to all the older guys on the team, it, it's been unbelievable. You mentioned about the role that you're in now and the way that's evolved. And you know, every season it's, uh, it's, it, it's different. And, and, uh, the identity of a team and, and how it's shaped and circumstances that can happen. And uh, this year's Harvard team, obviously you were hit with adversity. I mean, literally right out of the gate uh, down at URI with the, with Ben's injury. And how has that shaped it in the course of this season? Not just uh, to have an injured teammate, but uh, one of the guys, uh, one of the guys expected to be an impact freshman in, in your unit and, and how you've dealt with that this year. You guys have been remarkable to, to handle it the way you have. Yeah, man, it's been kind of tough on all of us, but I think the biggest thing is to just remind everybody each week that we're doing it for Ben. Like every game, every time we go out there, we strap up, uh, mm -hmm. playing for him in his eyes. So, uh, we've been hit with a lot of adversity from that point and then just not, uh, performing to, to work, like our expectations at the beginning of the season. But, uh, as, as one of the older guys and the leaders on the team, we kind of got to remind people that every week's a new week, every week's a new, uh, a new opportunity to, to create a new identity for yourself out there on the field and embrace and embrace the role you play uh, in this program. And uh, it, it, you have to remind them, like, this this is, this is a winning program. You know what I mean? You come to Harvard uh, to win games, and uh, even though things aren't going our way right now, like, it's, it's nothing to hang your head over. It's, it's, you just go back to work, go back in the lab, and, and you get it done uh, the following week. So it, it's – you. Coming in as a freshman and winning those three Ivy League championships off the bat, uh, I kind of get to teach these younger guys like what this program is all about. You know what I mean? Uh, because right now it, it's, it's different. It's a different time for this program. But going through everything that I've been through, I'm kind of able to express uh, what the expectation is and, and how how you kind of have to bounce back from adversity uh, in times like this. Well, indeed, you, you look at uh, at you and your unit and the defense. And uh, it really has been uh, a very resilient season. And I, I, I choose to dwell uh, on the positives. I think back to uh, the disappointment of the game against Princeton and, and uh, the way that uh, the, the club did rally back uh, with the, the strong performances uh, against uh, Dartmouth and Columbia to get you in the position that you were in last week. I think that really spoke well for uh, the team overall, your unit, the defensive backs, who have really been hit hard over the course of the year. You must be looking around sometimes and, just uh, counting them up and making sure <laughs> the other guys in the defensive backfield are, 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 are who's out here with me right now because uh, you're almost uh, you and uh, Tim Hale have been kind of the last guys standing back there. Yeah, yeah, uh, we've taken some hits and uh, even like every week at practice, it's kind of like the numbers are just getting lower and lower. But I mean, we're, we're an energetic group. We're always positive. We're always upbeat, and it's a it's a next man up situation. And a lot of these younger guys have embraced that role. Uh, there's a lot of freshmen who've had to step up early, like uh, Isaiah Wingfield, yes. uh, for example, at corner. And uh, uh, they've done a great job, you know what I mean? And we've done a great job keeping those guys up and making sure they know what they're doing when they go out there so they're ready to perform. Yeah, I think your perspective uh, as, uh, once again, a guy who's been in this program uh, for a while and, and getting ready to close out your career, uh, I would suspect from what I've seen, and you know better than me, Rashawn, from day to day in practice and, and preparedness, that these guys are going to make you proud moving on just because of the fact that out of necessity, uh, some of these guys like I say, I have, uh, have got uh, the opportunity to, uh, to play uh, some uh, very impactful uh, minutes here uh, during the course of the year, uh, maybe a little bit more, maybe a little bit earlier than expected. Yeah. Yeah, no, definitely. Like it is going to be very exciting to watch these guys grow. Just the fact that they've gotten so much exposure as freshmen 
and playing, like you said, playing more than, than expected at first. Um, it, it's, it's been exciting for me as one of the older guys to see them develop and just like thinking about their future and what they're going to bring to this program down the road is, is incredible. And I really think there's, there's a bright future ahead, especially for the def- uh, defensive unit. Uh, from the linebackers to the defensive backs, even to the D-line. Like, we have some very talented young freshmen who've embraced uh, important roles at this point in the season. Indeed the case. Uh, you've really uh, built off uh, a, a tremendous uh, breakout season last year. You uh, garnered all Ivy second-team recognition. You had 51 tackles. You broke up seven passes. I remember the game uh, in particular uh, up at Dartmouth. Uh, you, you had really a career day there, the 14 tackles in that game. You had a tackle for a loss. You had an interception. You had a couple of breakups. I had a guest with me uh, in the booth, a uh, Harvard guy, uh, played another sport at Harvard, but he happened to be in the booth uh, that day watching the game with us, and he turned to me a couple of times. And he said, you know, who the, who's this guy number seven? You know, he's like, wow, you know, and uh, and I said, well, I said, he's a pretty good player. He said, been a good player all year, but I said, he has really stepped it up today. I'll, I'll always remember that game in particular for you. That and uh, you pick six earlier this year is a couple of uh, McGee highlight moments for me calling the games. <laughs> yeah, that was, that was a very exciting game last year. I remember that uh, very vividly. And, uh, and this year, it, it's been fun, man, coming back. Just even last year, knowing that I had that extra season under my belt, like, uh, like seeing some of those other guys leave last year and come, uh, knowing that I had another opportunity to come back and ball, like, it's been great. I've had a lot of fun with it. Yeah, 46 uh, tackles uh, total this year, so uh, that's a goal. You can uh, have an opportunity to uh, get involved this Saturday, and you, you always are. You get a chance to maybe break your record from a year ago of 51. You had the uh, the pick six, which uh, was exciting and have been uh, very impactful, and, and uh, in particular just uh, keeping things uh, together back there uh, as a veteran. Uh, and uh, looking at, uh, at what you have ahead uh, with Yale, uh, truth be told, this looks like one of the more explosive, uh, dynamic, and versatile offenses that you're going to uh, that, that you're going to face. What what have you learned about them uh, as far as uh, getting ready? Of course, a rivalry game, and that speaks for itself. But in terms of what you'll expect uh, with uh, Rawlings at quarterback and and uh, some of the challenges this week. Yeah, it's it's a very talented offense. It's probably one of the the most talented offenses we faced all year. Um, and even so, last year they were a, bunch, a couple freshmen starting on that side, and they're sophomores this year, and they're, they're even better than they were last year. So uh, we're excited for the challenge. Like, we, we know that they're good. They're a good group. They have some good uh, running backs. They have some good receivers. Uh, Rollins has done a great job all year. But I mean, we're ready for the challenge. Uh, I know the weather's not supposed to be too well on, on Saturday, so we're expecting a, a lot of run. But uh, we're, we're, we're dialed in this week in terms of the game plan, and we're focused on stopping the run this weekend. Uh, we also know that Rollins can spring it, so uh, secondary is definitely ready to make plays on the ball, and we know that uh, it's supposed to be raining, so hopefully that, that, that impacts him a little bit, and uh, balls up in the air, and tip drill, and I could tip it to Timmy or Tanner, and or, or vice versa, we could take it down uh, back to the house for six. Uh, we're excited, man. I, I really can't wait. Uh, like I said, it's a talented offensive group, but I mean, we're ready to rise to the challenge. I, I, I forgot about, how can I forget about, I had Tanner Lee on earlier in the game, but really the the three veterans to carry uh, carrying the flag into the final game. And uh, you guys have all had out, outstanding seasons looking to uh, close out on a high note. And uh, you mentioned about if it does get to be uh, more of a uh, running operation for that Yale offense, uh, observing you over the course of your career, that's one area of the game and the tackle totals prove it. You're not shy of coming up and, and playing run force. That's for sure. You're not exactly Deion Sanders out there. <laughs> not uh I definitely love coming coming up and hitting, and that's that's one thing we work on every day in practice. Is yep. our run fits even at the secondary level because it's such an important part of the game from from the safety spot to the corner spot. So, I mean that that's one thing I'm very excited about this weekend is coming up and meeting uh, the running backs in the hole. Uh, I know it's going to be kind of messy, but I mean I love I love <laughs> that. Like yeah, as a kid, I used to love playing the rain games and playing in the mud and stuff like that. <laughs> uh, I'm pretty hyped up about it. I was going to ask you, that was a question I was going to ask you about uh, if you'd, you'd had that experience uh, growing up in uh, Connecticut. You probably, you've had a few of those uh, over the course of your career, probably going all the way back to high school. Oh, yeah, definitely, definitely. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I started playing when I was seven, so as a kid, just playing in the rain, <laughs> playing in the snow, something that I, I love, uh, I definitely embrace. So uh, I, I'm, there's a bunch of kids on the team from California and Texas going so you do it. <laughs> but, uh, but I'm out there flying around and I'm having a good time, and kind of embracing it you know what i mean especially this one being the last one i'm definitely going to be 
be out there, you know, all that guy and flying around. Absolutely. And you got a pretty good uh, football background. Also, uh, truth be told, uh, your dad having uh, played uh, at Central uh, Central Connecticut football and also uh, participated in track. Yeah, yeah. My pops, he's, he's definitely a big influence uh, growing up. Just, just helping me uh, learn more about the game and, and telling me about his experience playing college football and, and running track and just competing. So I get a lot of my competitive edge from him. Um and it's kind of crazy. Like, we always talk about, like, one day I'm going to play my last game. The fact that it's coming up is, is kind of mm. surreal. Um, definitely look, look to go out and, and go out on top and, and make him proud for sure. Growing up in uh, Windsor, Connecticut, uh, had an outstanding career at uh, Rye Country Day. You were a captain. Uh, you, you were one of the leaders of a team that was undefeated as a junior New England prep champion, senior MVP, two-time league all-star, played on both sides of the ball, also quarterback, running back. And uh, as far as Windsor, Connecticut was uh, was Yale. Is there a little extra motivation playing Yale as a Connecticut native? Was Yale on the radar screen for you at the time that you made the decision for Harvard? Uh, Yale actually didn't recruit me as heavily as some of the other Ivy League schools. Um, I definitely thought about attending Yale growing up, uh, but the fact that they didn't recruit me heavily, it's always been kind of like, oh, I'm, I'm gonna. This game means a little bit more to me because I'm from Connecticut, and right. uh, I'm trying to show out against them for sure. Well, you'll be playing your final game for the Crimson and uh, as a as a senior in the state of Connecticut at the Yale Bowl in New Haven this Saturday. Before that happens, uh, just a, a final question. Uh, I know that uh, there's a, a pretty special moment uh, as far as the uh, the final uh, practice uh, that you have and uh, it, it would, it, as a member of the Crimson. Just to give us a little bit of, uh, without too many secrets or the secret handshake or anything, but just to just to give uh, the fans that, that follow our program here on Inside Harvard Football a little bit in, of insight about uh, what that uh, tradition's all about. Yeah, so on the last day, uh, last day of practice, which is Thursday for us, we'll, we'll be out on the turf. There'll be no pads. And then at the end of practice, um, we'll do a final senior walk around. So the seniors will take a lap around the field. And then we'll all walk together, talk about the memories, talk about our time here at Harvard. Um, and then once we get all the way around the field, uh, the, the freshmen, sophomores, and juniors kind of line up, and the coaches as well. And we'll go one by one, and we'll just we'll talk to each one of them, step them up, like just talk about our experience, like playing with them, and just kind of give them some words of encouragement going forward. Uh, just telling them how fast this process goes, and and like the future is bright, and, and whatever whatever uh, relationships we have with, with the different players on this team, we talk about that, and and then. We get to the coaches as well. We kind of thank them for the opportunity they've given us to play at, at the top academic institution in the world. You know what I mean? So mm-hmm. uh, it, it's a pretty, uh, sp- it's a pretty special day. I'm pretty excited about it. Uh, seeing some of my, my friends last year go through, it was kind of crazy because uh, their time flew by, and then now I'm here, which is, which is crazy. But um, I'm, I'm excited, and uh, I know all these other guys are excited too. It, it's kind of a bittersweet moment, you know what I mean? That that last practice, that last lap. Yeah. That's also uh, the mark of getting there to go out there and be yeah, so I'm pretty excited. Absolutely. It's your, it's, it's your time. It's your moment for you and uh, your fellow seniors. Uh, very special. And uh, that'll be on Thursday and then on Saturday. Uh, it'll be extra special followed up uh, with a victory in the game against Yale down at the Yale Bowl. Well, Sean, I want to thank you very much for joining us. Really appreciate your time this week. And uh, all the best to you and your teammates, for everybody in uh, Crimson Nation here on uh, Inside Harvard Football as uh, you get ready uh, to go down and take on the Bulldogs of Yale. Thanks, Bernie. I appreciate you having me. For Sean McGee, senior cornerback, senior defensive back for the Harvard Crimson out of Windsor, Connecticut, getting ready for his final game in the game this week. Our guest, our Crimson profile on Inside Harvard Football.